Good morning. Political candidates don't often want to appear together on television. This morning, two of them are in what many say will be a close race. We're talking about state Senate District number 10. This one often swings from Democrat to Republican. It's Fort Worth, Arlington, all the way up to South Lake. And in studio this morning, Connie Burton there on the right in the purple. She is the Republican incumbent. Beverly Powell on the left there is the Democratic challenger. And joining the questioning next to me is Bud Kennedy of the Star-Telegram. Thanks for coming in. Thanks morning, for being Senator. here. Thank you for Hi. having us. Absolutely. Uh, Senator Burton, we'll start with you okay. on and property taxes. They're yes. due in about 90 days. No one yes. likes paying them, but they always are going up every year in the state, partly because the legislature spends less on education. Why haven't Republicans done more? to help homeowners. Um, so that's not true. That's a, again, a narrative that many people are talking about. I'm in the state legislature um, and that's not how it works. Uh, and again, I, I talked about this last week or a couple of weeks ago on the other show that we were on um, as uh, the, how the budget works is as the uh, property taxes go down at the local level, uh, the more money that the state puts in uh, for the local level. And I proved this uh, pointing out Beverly Powell's own school district actually, um, because she's been saying this for some time now too. Um, uh, years ago, uh, she said the state isn't spending enough money and therefore we need to raise taxes here at the local level when she was a straight, uh, school board trustee at Burleson ISD. And um, the voters uh, put that to a referendum, to a vote, and the voters rejected that. So we don't want to pay higher school taxes. And because of that, their money did not go up, it went down. And so when the, um, the state's uh, dollars went up, but here, what I want everybody to understand is this is all the taxpayer dollars, whether it comes from the state, the local, or the federal, it's all taxpayer dollars. And what we're working on at the state is, is uh, a, we're being prudent with those dollars, and we need the local level as well as the, as the federal level let's, to be prudent as well. Connie, let's give Beverly a chance to respond to that. Well, I disagree completely with that statement, and, and Connie's very well aware of that. I agree with uh, County Judge Whitley's uh, assessment of our issue. Over the four years that Connie has been seated in the Senate, we've seen our local property taxes rise and we've seen the portion of state funding uh, to our public schools go down. Uh, Connie, in our, our former interview, cherry picked one district at one period of time. There are 18 portions of 18 districts in Senate District 10. And when you look at that as a whole, you will see that pattern of decreasing school funding from the state level and increasing our property taxes at the local level to make up the difference. And I agree with Judge Whitley's assessment that until the state starts to return to equity, to a closer to 50% portion of school funding, we are gonna continue to see that pattern. In fact, our state budget that was passed in the last session of our Senate and House. Um, 2017, yeah. Yes, in 2017, passed a budget that is dependent and requires a 14% property tax increase at the local level. Connie, before we get away yeah, from this, both of you, the, uh, <laughs> Connie, you, you said that the spending on tech, on schools has gone up, but really it hasn't kept up with population and inflation. Oh, yes, it has. Right? Yes. It has? Yes, okay. $4 billion additional dollars we put into education. But it, uh, that is exactly not, population plus inflation. Exactly population yes, inflation. Yes, that is it, correct. It, it's, we put $4 billion new, new dollars into um, education. Okay. And we should because it is, you know, it is important. It is a core function of, of our state. Um, and, and we should be putting those dollars in there. But I know everybody's getting their tax, uh, yeah. uh, you know, papers the right, tax now, right now. And it says it right on there. It's, it's unbelievable that you're saying that the state has anything to do with local property taxes. You know good and well that y'all set those. It even says it on your property statements and, and, that and, you're getting. It says and, and this is local, in no way yeah. the legislature. This is a local level issue. Indeed, the local government set those, but they also rely on money from the state. Absolutely. Which, which school districts across the state, even the Legislative Budget Board, has said that the state legislature is allocating less money because, to, to local education. Because the local levels are going up. That's how, the, that's how it works. I will tell you, um, Senator Jane Nelson is the budget writer in the Senate. Right. Um, she's the one that writes the budget. And if y'all are saying that this is incorrect, you are saying that Senator Nelson doesn't know what she's doing. Still and she is, the, about this she is the one that is writing it. We don't want to talk entirely in this program, <laughs> in, in this segment about, uh, about property taxes. But let me switch off and, and ask you, uh, Beverly, how effective can you be if you were elected since Republicans dominate that chamber? 
You know, I believe that we are seeing the evidence all across our state that it is time to return to a more collaborative spirit of governance. Um, it's time for us to move away from narrow ideology, uh, ideological focus and toward a more collaborative, common sense, consensus building form of government. But if you're elected though, if you're elected, the Republicans still own that chamber essentially. They, they still get what they want passed. What can you do? You know, that doesn't mean that you can't reach a, across the aisle to uh, hold hands with legislators of, of other stripes. It doesn't mean that you can't reason through the evidence that comes before you to make good decisions well, that are right for the citizens that live in the state of Texas and in District 10. Beverly, be specific. One of the issues in the primary was that you'd voted Republican several times. Is there an issue where you see common ground between you and, and Dan Patrick? You know, I, I, um, I think that there's lots of common ground. I believe in maintaining the economic vitality of our region. And I believe that we can talk about the things that are important to the Dallas-Fort Worth area to make sure that we maintain the economic development incentives that have kept us so vibrant, that have created jobs across our region, that created jobs for the new Facebook plant that came to North Fort Worth, that created jobs for the expansion of the General Motors plant in Arlington, the Special Events Trust Fund that provides funding that allows for the NFL and the NCAA and all of the sporting events that come to our region, not to mention the things that happen at Connie, Will Rogers Coliseum. Connie, you policy. should reply to that. You've been at odds with some Republicans on, on Absol business incentives. Absolutely. Um, yeah, well, okay, I will respond to that. Yes, um, absolutely. What I'm for are lower taxes, lower regulations across the board for all businesses. Um, I don't want any one business to um, have to carry the burden because the state has, um, you know, provided corporate welfare, which is what I like to call it, to certain businesses. Taxpayers are very frustrated with this, with this cronyism that exists in government. And basically, that's where Beverly Powell sits. She wants to give certain businesses incentives, certain, uh, and from the taxpayers, by the way. These businesses can, it, what I want to do is help them all with low taxes and low regulations. And let me speak, too, also about the across the aisle, because I think that's very important. It is true. Um, I have worked across the the aisle um, since I was in the legislature. I worked with, I've worked with um, uh, Senator West on a bill, a licensing bill. I've worked with Senator Watson on a reform uh, um, legislation. All of the House members, very far left House members, brought me their um, their um, uh, bills to get passed because they knew I could get them passed in the Senate um, with uh, criminal justice, excuse me, with criminal justice reform. They brought their bills to me because they knew I could get them done. So, you know, it, it, it's a fallacy to say you that I Senate don't. You were the sponsor of those bills, That's right? correct. That is correct. Yeah. So let's, that's let's, let's exactly. Let, let's let Beverly respond to that, too, because she, she said that you want to allow certain businesses to get state assistance. You know, what I call those is investments. And if you look at the real effective use of business incentives, what you will see is that they are investments in our economy. There is a cost benefit analysis to be reasoned through when we decide which um, initiatives that come before our local municipalities and, and through our taxing agencies, which businesses uh, provide the greatest incentive for job creation, which ones have a greatest payoff in terms of increasing our tax base at the end of the day. And what we've seen is the use of those incentives have created hundreds, maybe thousands of jobs across our region, and they've created millions of dollars in tax base improvements. Only for the large businesses, which again, you're picking winners and losers. I want I want people to have their own tax pay, their own dollars in their own pockets and decide where they want to spend it. Let, to their, and their I their want businesses. to be sure that we're picking winners. Let me ask that you we're something. Not creating <laughs> They're not always winners, where Beverly, we trust are the me. Losers. Let, let We've got ask, a long list of those that Let me ask you both something failed. that's on a lot of people's minds this morning. You know, both of you have said you admire women. Sarah Palin, Hillary Clinton, both of you have taken some grief for that. You know, what will help women gain equality in public office, particularly in the Texas legislature? What have you done to help women step up into public office? Um, I think just being one that does it yourself. Um, oftentimes helps others to do the same. I talked to a lot of um, women who very much um, 
respect the fact that I came from uh, basically owning my own business to a stay-at-home mom to then running for office and winning um, a Senate seat. And um, so I talk to, to girls all the time, young women, um, all the time about, you know, it's the greatest country on earth. Is that it still after this last week? Do you still feel the same way? How did you feel about the Kavanaugh hearings? Um, you know, um, I, you know, I felt for both, actually. Um, you know, Mrs. Ford clearly um, has been victimized, has gone through a traumatic experience, and I hate that. Um, I, I also worry that we are in a place in our country where um, it's, it's just opinion that decides things. You know, we are a country of laws, which means that you are innocent until proven guilty. And I'm worried about that right now. And it's one of the reasons why I like to be on the Criminal Justice Committee, because that's the kinds of things that I work on in there. We'll, we'll, see, if we have, we, yeah, we'll see if we have a poll with that, but let, let's let you respond to as well. Uh, Bud's question was, was about what have you done to help women uh, you know, climb the ladder essentially. And I'm curious about your thoughts on Kavanaugh as well too. Well, I can tell you this, that I have been very focused on higher education. And one of the things that I've been involved in over the last uh, 10 or 15 years is the development of a university in the community where I live. I brought, uh, I was part of a team that brought a community college to Burleson and then also part of a team and I led the fundraising efforts to raise over $1.5 million to make sure that young people have access to higher education, which prepares them for jobs right. like this. I'm endorsed by Annie's List, which is one of the organizations that um, that brings together uh, powerful women to well, make sure that we create opportunities for women across the the state of Texas. We, we have about 30, 30 or 40 seconds left here too. Let me just lay this out for the voters real briefly. If, elect, if elected, top priority for you, Beverly. Top priority for me is public education and getting this funding piece right. We are the 38th, we are 38th in the nation. It is time for us to be first in the nation in per student funding. And if re-elected, Connie, what Property is your top taxes, priority? Property taxes, and there's a clear distinction. Um, she was on the board of trustees. She raised taxes. Not only that, she had to be sued by her IS in order to pay over $7,000 in property taxes. That real, is real not briefly true. Respond to that that real is absolutely not true. It's public record. Were you, were you sued at all uh, over that? You, you, you know, were sued because you did not pay your property taxes at Burleson ISD. That is not over true. $7, that is not true. I have paid every dime of property taxes that I ever owed. It is absolutely patently it, untrue it's public that record. I did not pay my taxes, Connie. It's public record. All right, that's Connie Burton and Beverly Powell, uh, both candidates for State Senate District 10 in Tarrant County. Thanks for appearing together. We appreciate you coming in. Absolutely. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you.